Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here with that a new corporation. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a new website or a new portal into .NET Nuke using the notion of a parent portal. Now in .NET Nuke, there are two types of portals, parent and child. The difference between a parent and a child portal really is going to be the, the configuration you have to make within IIS, your web server, and also having DNS configured for some sort of name, typically a domain name. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to log into our .NET Nuke portal. If the login is a super user, we're going to navigate to the portals page. From there, we're going to use the actions menu to add a new portal. And then we'll choose a parent portal. We'll type in an alias, the domain name we're going to be using. Now when you create a portal, you do have to configure an administrator account for that portal. And you have to keep in mind that users are not shared across portals. So we have to create a new administrator account for this new portal that we're creating. And then we'll actually have to go through and make some changes to our web server in IIS in order for Data Nuke to respond for that new portal that gets created. So here we have a .NET Nuke 5.6.0 Professional Edition website running locally on a, a remote desktop that I'm connected to. Now what we're going to go ahead and do, we're already logged in as the host or the user account, super user account, so we're going to navigate to the host portals page. From here we're going to go to the actions menu in the portals page and choose add new portal. Now going through and adding a portal, we can simply come in and type in the alias that we want to use. Now the first option is parent or child. You can see it defaults to parent. We're going to type in a, a domain name that we want to use. So I'm going to use .NET Nuke demo.com. Now I currently have my local computer configured spoofing the DNS so that any requests for that domain name from this computer will point back to itself. If you were to try to visit that website you would just get a parked page right now. I'm going to go ahead and give the portal a title. We can give it a description as well and keywords. Now you do have to choose a portal template and out of the box with .NET Nuke there's one template called the default website template. So we're going to go ahead and choose that and then we can provide our user information. Now we have to type in a username here. We cannot reuse the admin username that's currently assigned to our existing portal. So I'm just going to reuse or create an account called admin2. And I'm going to use a fake email address for now and define a password for that account. Now, if I go ahead and create the portal, .NET Nuke will go and create the portal. And it's actually going to come back and tell us that it had a problem sending an email. What it tries to do is it tries to send an email to the newly created administrator. Because I don't have SMTP configured on my .NET Nuke website, that email can't be sent. So we get this red message at the top. It does tell us that the portal was created and provides us a link to navigate to that portal. Now, if we try to directly navigate to that link right now, what we're going to end up with is an IIS 7 landing page. That's because we haven't told IIS how to handle the domain name coming in for www.netnukedemo.com. So what I need to do is I need to get into my IIS manager. I can do that by clicking on start and typing in inetmgr. And this will load up the IIS interface for Windows 7. Now, if you're using Windows XP, you can't actually go through this process. Windows XP does not allow you to host multiple websites, whereas Windows 2003, Vista 7, and 2008, and even Windows 2000 do allow you to host multiple websites. So within IIS, what we're going to do is expand on the left side and expand the Sites node. Well, what's currently happening is coming into .NET Nuke, or coming into IIS, that request comes in and hits the default website. Well, we have .NET Nuke running as a virtual directory underneath of the default website. Since we set up a parent portal, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new website in IIS. So I'm going to right click on the Sites node, and I'm going to come in here and type in the name of our website. And I'm using the same name as I am for the domain name. Now the physical path is going to point to the same folder that we currently have .NET Nuke running in. So I'm going to point to C, inetpub, www root .NET Nuke. 
After that, we need to tell IIS how to handle this incoming request. Basically, we're going to say, use this host header, or this host name, just using www.anoopdemo.com, and then I'll click OK. Now that we've added the website in IIS and we've done a refresh, we actually need to make one change. So when we created this application pool or this website in IIS, it decided to use the, a newly created application pool. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the application pool for the website by right clicking on the website, choosing advanced settings, and instead of using this application pool, we're going to go ahead and use the same application pool that our current website is running under. And that would be the default app pool. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And if we go back to Internet Explorer now and do a refresh, the request will now come into IIS. IIS will pick it up and send it to that new website that we created. That website calls .NET Nuke. And .NET Nuke will look at the incoming request, see the path, and we'll load up our newly created portal. So what we'll find here is a very similar look to the existing website we were looking at previously, except that you'll see that we do not have a page one and a test page option. That's because we're now logged in or hitting the second portal. If I load up another tab here within Internet Explorer and I browse to localhost slash .NET Nuke, from here you'll see that we load the first portal. That was the original portal that we used, we created when we ran through the web application installer. So it might take just a moment for that to load up here. But once it does, you can see we're actually logged into that portal with the host account still. We have separate pages from the existing portal or that new portal we just created. Now, if we go to that new portal and we attempt to log in, if we try to log in with the admin account, which was the user for portal ID zero, the first portal, we're not going to be able to log in. So I'll type in the information for that account. And you can see the login fails. Now if I type in admin2, which was the user account we created when we created the portal, that account will be able to log into this portal. And we can see we now get access to the admin menu. So even though the, both of the websites currently look very similar because of the skin and the logo and the various settings, they are two unique websites. They have their own collections of users, they have their own collections of security roles, their own pages, and their own content. Now in another video, we'll go ahead and create a child portal, show you how much easier it is to create a child portal within .NET New, because you don't have to go through the process of configuring anything in terms of domain name and anything within IIS itself. In the meantime, I'd encourage you to check out more information about our .NET Nuke training program. You can find it on the training page, which is located under the resources tab at .NET Nuke.com. There you'll find a variety of free training videos, as well as an upcoming schedule of our instructor-led online training. We also offer custom on-site and online, tra online training. You can find information there about those two offerings. Again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET New Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.